folks, we got a big storm passing through today. So I'm going to spend the day puttering on some projects here in the workshop. This is all stuff I'm making for the bush camp. And I mentioned this briefly on my last video. Um, over at the bush camp right now I have, you know, folding chairs and a few things. And that's just temporary. But over time, I want to have everything that I use there made from materials in, that I found in the woods, being, you know, trees and tree branches and stones, but also stuff that I find um, and repurpose, like this old gas can. I found this old gas can in the woods, and in here it's got a bunch of rust and stuff. Um, I opened the cap to see how shiny it is, but it's got a built-in spout. So I can't really see inside, and I'm going to cut it open, and if it's shiny enough inside, my plan is to make a reflector oven for the bush camp. And I got a few other little projects. So I'm going to try and cut this open and see what I can come up with. Cut a section of that away. Tin snips. This would go a lot better if I had my other tin snips. These are old and worn out. I don't know, folks. Looking pretty crappy in there. It's really too bad that it's so dirty on the inside. And I think that I could sand it and get it shiny, but then that sanded metal would just rust and it would end up being like this. So lining it with foil will be the answer. My project is looking kind of disappointing. The inside of the can is rusty and crappy and not very reflective but I'm a stubborn old cuss and I'm not ready to quit <laughs> Bending that over, smashing it down with the hammer, is the best bet. It's working out better than I thought. That's working out pretty nice. I think, all in all, it's going to be a good plan. right now. This is why I built the workshop. I love coming down here puttering on things and I'm using my dad's old tools so that makes me feel even better. You know, I feel my dad's presence when I do stuff like this using my ingenuity to figure something out and make something I want because that's how he was. He was really brilliant in that regard. He had a creative mind. If there was something that he wanted, he would make the tool, invent the tool to make the piece that he needed. Um, luckily I inherited that from my dad. 
So I feel his presence when I'm doing stuff like this. He would get right in on this project. Now I've got this spout here, and I don't want it poking inside the can. So I think I'm going to cut this off and then put the cap back on the can. And I put some little legs on it too. I got all kinds of scrap. I can figure something out. Cut that little lip away. And I think that'll slide it through. These are a couple of you know brackets that I bought and never used. This was when we were doing the post out here for the garden and I was sinking them in concrete. Um, I ended up taking this off of a few of them. But this is a good heavy bracket that can be used for something. Uh, this was a handle off of something, but that could be handy for something. This and this, believe it or not, these were tow hooks off of my 1988 Toyota. <laughs> I can't believe I still have this stuff. But one of these days i got to put it to use. And, uh, oh, look at this. I got these at the dump about a year ago, I think. And I think I even showed them in a video. I think these are made for screwing to a wall. And then you have like an antenna bolted to it with U-bolts, something like that. I saw these at the dump. I know I had two of them. I had two of them, and I could also come in handy someday. And <laughs> why not? Those will make nice little legs for my oven. Yeah. When you live out in the woods. And you need something. You can't just run to the hardware store. So having stuff like this can save the day. That's the handle from a five-gallon pail. I'm going to need a handle on that when I want to move it around. Maybe I can make it out of that. A handle makes a handle. <laughs> that looks like quarter-inch holes. Got the drill bit. Then I'm going to need some bolts. My handy dandy ledger here under B. <laughs> okay, bolts. I've got quarter 20 assorted length and PJ 38. 38. One, two, three, four. So I think putting a handle on it would be advantageous in many ways. I could put the oven closer to the flame or pull it away from the flame. Or if I think the entree is done and I want to check on it, I can just pick it up, take it away from the flame entirely. So um, I had a bunch of different things I was going to use, but I got this bucket handle which you saw me take out of the bag of tricks. And I think I'm going to use this. That way all I have to do is drill a couple of holes and place it in there and I don't have to use any of my nuts and bolts. Drill my holes, pop that down through, bend them away from each other, there's no way it can come out. What do you think, Dad? You think it'll work? I know he's probably got a better idea. He ain't here to help. Now we need a rack. Whenever I go to the dump and I see a rack, I grab it. And I've gotten tons of them. They come in handy for different things. Like this is just a little cooling rack, you know, when you take a cake or something out of the oven. Then I saw this one. I thought that was pretty cool. I grabbed that. And then this week we were there and I seen this one. This is real heavy duty. Um, I'm not sure which one is going to fit best. I haven't tried it yet. The oval one. Would work. It's just a little bit big if I bent these down. 
So this rack right here, from here to here, is the length of the inside of that. And then if I bend these down right there, that radius runs with the bottom of that. And I think that'll seat really good. I hope so. I'm going to put that in the vise and see if I can bend it. In there, like that. Bend that down. So I flared these out a little bit and I think that way it'll kind of pressure fit inside the oven. Let's try it out. There it is man. So what do you think folks? My gas can reflector oven all made out of trash. It's kind of cute. I think it's cute. Yeah. Made out of a gas can that's been out in the woods. The little rack and the metal that I got at the dump. And this was a handle off of a five gallon pail that was junk. And now it's been repurposed. This was a fun project. So now I'm going to line this with heavy duty aluminum foil. And I think it's going to work just fine. Actually, I think it's better that I'm going to line it with foil. If that was all shiny and new and I used it just the way it is, and there was food splatters in there, and then I left that at the bush camp, which I'm going to, and I think the bear would be attracted to it and just ruin it. He'd mess up my project, and I don't want that. So by putting foil in it, fresh, clean foil every time I cook, I think it'll be much better. So sometimes things don't work out as planned, but it actually works out better, all right? So when this storm is over with, first thing I'm going to do is head out to the bush camp, clean out the fire pit, get a fire going, and try baking something. And I'm pretty certain that even though it's roughly 20 degrees out, it's supposed to drop down to two below, I think, or four below tomorrow night. So it'll be cold. And even though it's cold out, I'm pretty sure that that will cook stuff just fine. Before I lined the uh, reflector oven with foil, I scrubbed it all out, cleaned it up. Actually got kind of shiny, but nonetheless, um, since it's an old can, I ended up coating it all with tin foil on the inside. And uh, we're going to get out there and light a fire and see what happens. So I made it out to the bush camp. The storm that we were having uh, luckily blew away. We got oh, five or six inches of snow and very little of the ice. In fact, there's no evidence of the ice now, so that's perfect. So I probably should have put my snowshoes on, but I got trucking out here without them, and I wasn't going to go turn around and get them. So I made it out here. It's snowing and blowing, but it's kind of nice. And I just got the fire going, and uh, in a little bit, we're going to give it the maiden voyage. Well, the reflector oven is going to have an ultimate challenge for its maiden voyage. Not only is it 20 degrees and really, really blustery out here today, which will be a problem because this wind is just gonna keep blowing the heat away and it's going to be inconsistent. Um, instead of just trying to roast a piece of meat, uh, I'm gonna try and cook corn muffins. Um, I don't know, folks. Uh, I'm certain that if I put a piece of meat in there, it would get nice and hot in no time, but that would be too easy. Uh, I'm going to try and cook the corn muffins and see what happens. <laughs> well, my batter is mostly frozen, so I don't know. We're going to give it a go anyway. <laughs> at first, I didn't think it was going to work at all. I thought this was going to be an epic fail because my batter 
was already freezing up. Like I said, I'm a stubborn old cuss, so I'm just going to keep on cooking them. We're baking in the snow, people. <laughs> Let's see Martha Stewart top that. <laughs> well, my fire was starting to get kind of cuckoo, and my muffins are starting to burn on the top, so I turned this around just for a bit. Because it's so cold and windy out here, it's becoming a real challenge to pull this off. The reflector oven works best when you have a raging flame in front of it. Um, but when I do that, they brown up too much and they're not cooking on the inside. So I need to have a little bit slower flame. But with a slower flame, it's so cold out here and windy, the heat just gets blown away. And it's not staying in the oven like it does with a conventional oven. But this is no conventional situation. So I think one way or another, we're all gonna have some corn muffins that just might be a little too toasted on the top. What do you think? Let's go check. I don't have a tripod with me, so it's kind of tough to film this, but we're gonna see. Steamy muffin. Oh, smells good. <laughs> I didn't bring any butter with me. Mm. What? It's cooked all the way through, folks. Mm. Mm. Cooked in an old gas can in the winter in the woods. If it did this good in these conditions, in the summertime it's going to be fantastic. Um, that way I can put it exactly how I want it, have a better surface to set it on. I mean, everything out here is frozen. The only thing I wish is I brought some butter. Mm. Well, my friends, the little gas can reflector oven worked like a charm. I'm not going to say I'm surprised because I really had faith in it. I didn't have any doubts whatsoever. Yep. Pretty cool. So if you like this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe and follow along for the next Bush Camp project. <laughs> Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss. Frankie and the Boss